you might remember that a couple months ago I made a poster trailer that everybody really seen. Hi everybody, welcome back to Bentley House. I'm Aira. And you might remember that a couple months ago I made an upholstered chair tutorial that everybody really seemed to like. So on request of some of my subscribers, I decided to make a super easy tutorial to make an ottoman that could go with it. I will link the original chair tutorial in the iCard above. And I will also link the original template in the description below. The first thing you're going to need is some scrap foam board. This is 3 16 inch foam board, but you can use whatever you have. You will also need some quilt batting. This I find in any fabric store that specialize in quilts. You will need some fabric. I'm using fabric that matches my original chair, but you can of course use any fabric you like. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make those little dimples you see in some upholstery. So for that, I'm going to be using a needle and some embroidery thread that is a color similar to the leaves you see on the fabric pattern. I'm also going to need a dowel rod, and this is going to be the legs of my ottoman. I'm going to use this little wood chomper. It's just a handheld um, device that can cut wood for me. Some scissors to cut the fabric. You will also need some tacky glue. And the template that I left the link below in the uh, description. You will actually just need the pieces marked D. So if you've already made the chair and you have the pieces cut out, just save those two pieces and that could help you create this ottoman. So first thing I'm going to do is cut out the pieces if you don't already have them cut out. These are actually very easy pieces. There's nothing special to their shape. So if you don't want to print it, go to the trouble to print out the template, you can just measure out the size ottoman that you want. This actually makes a rather large ottoman. So if you want something smaller, feel free to create your own rectangle shape. Now I'm going to trace the pattern onto my foam board. Usually I try to line it up with the side, but this foam board piece has been used so many times that it is not straight. You can either decide to make it as wide as your chair or a little bit thinner. Usually ottomans aren't wider than the chair. So you can just play around with those looks and see what you like. So after I trace my patterns onto my foam board, I'm going to take my X-Acto knife, which I forgot to mention in the supplies part of the video, um, but most miniaturists have at least one laying around. I'm just going to use my X-Acto knife and try to keep it as straight up and down as possible so I have straight edges on my foam board. Then I'm going to take my tacky glue and I am going to glue these two pieces together. These two pieces are going to create the base of our ottoman that we can later stick the chair or the ottoman legs into. Now I'm going to mark out where I want my upholstery dimples to be. I actually have to figure this out before I upholster anything. So I'm just marking them by eye, but of course you can measure them if you like. I'm just going to mark four, you can do two, you can do eight, whatever you like. Now I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to punch all the way through my foam. Make sure you don't get your finger while you do this. And as I punch it through, I'm just gonna wiggle it back and forth a little bit to make sure that hole is open. Now that I have all four holes done, I can start adding my quilt batting to the top of the ottoman. I'm gonna carefully put my tacky glue on there so that I don't get tacky glue in any of the holes. And then I'm gonna turn it upside down onto the quilt batting. I'm going to carefully cut around the edges so that it's flush with the foam board. After that's done, I should have a layer of two pieces of foam board and one piece of quilt batting. You can add as many pieces as you want. For this, I added three pieces of quilt batting, following the same steps. Now I want to add quilt batting around the outside edge of the ottoman. So I'm going to cut a long, thin piece, and I'm going to line it up with the bottom of the foam board and glue it on all the way around the ottoman. 
When I get around to the part where I started, I can just clip off the edge and then line it up with the edge I started with. You won't be able to see this seam after you put the fabric over the ottoman. Once that's glued down and dry, I can go ahead and cut off the overlapping pieces of quilt batting that are on the upper side of the ottoman. I want to line it up with my top piece of quilt batting. Now we can move on to the fabric. I am going to grab the fabric that I want and flip my ottoman over. It's sitting on the wrong side of the fabric. We want the right side out so that we have a beautiful pattern once it's folded down over the ottoman. I am only going to put glue on the edges of the ottoman and not on the top. Occasionally glue can seep through fabric and it can make it look ugly or dim and so I like to make sure that I only put glue on the sides of the ottoman and not the part that people will most likely be looking at. Then I'm just going to simply put it top down on the wrong side of my fabric so that I can begin to fold up the edges of the fabric, kind of like a, a present. I'm going to make sure each side folds up flat against the side of my ottoman and I'm going to have four corners that kind of stick out like triangles. Make sure when you're folding it up that you're careful with the sides that you don't scrunch them down too much so that you have rounded sides. You want to make sure you keep that square shape that you've created. So on the corners, like I said, we have these triangle shapes and you want to make sure that they are squeezed together and glued together very well because later we're going to be cutting them off. Next we're going to make our dimples. You want to take your embroidery thread. I left mine the full six strands, but if you want to make it thinner, you definitely can. I made a double knot in the center of the string. This is what's going to keep it from going all the way through our ottoman. Then I'm going to fold the string in half so I have the knot on one side and I have the loose ends on the other side. Then I'm going to take the loose ends and put them through the eye of my needle and I'm going to put about halfway down my string so that it's able to be pulled through the ottoman. I'm going to put the needle through the bottom first so I can find the hole that I originally made. Then I'm going to go back down through the top, sorry it's off screen, back down through the top so that um, I can find the hole that we previously put in the foam board and pull the string down. This is what will make the dimple in your fabric. Then to secure it, I'm just going to take some tacky glue. I'm going to put some of the tacky glue into the hole and then some of it on the string and then I'm just going to hold that until it's tacky enough for me to let go. I'm going to do this four times. Just do it as many times as as many holes as you made. Now I'm going to be focusing on those triangle corners I talked about. I'm actually going to cut straight up and then curve out when I get towards the top of the ottoman. This is so later on I can add a little bit of glue to that top curve, push it down with my finger, and it will make a more realistic curve at the corner of the ottoman. I will do this to all four corners. After that's complete, you can go ahead and trim off any excess material you have hanging off the side and leave that flush with the bottom of the ottoman. Next we're going to cover the sides and for this we're going to need one long thin strip of fabric, one that makes you make sure that it wraps all the way around your ottoman. I am going to hem one edge of it by using tacky glue. You can leave the other edge unhemmed. I am making approximately a quarter inch hem along the length of the entire piece. Once that's dried, I can add it to my ottoman. I want to make sure I have the hem side up and I'm going to put a little bit of tacky glue along the edges of my ottoman. I'm going to smooth that out with my finger so that it's not clumpy and doesn't show through the fabric. And then I'm going to start in the middle of the back. You can also start this at the corner if you like. And I'm going to take the fabric all the way around the ottoman, lining it up with the top of the cushion. 
When I get to the back side, I'm going to cut a about a half inch overlap and then I'm going to hem the edge of the fabric and then glue the hem edge down so that it finishes it over the side where we started. Now you can cut off excess fabric, leaving a quarter inch at the bottom. This is one you don't wanna cut flush. We're actually going to fold it down over the edges to create a smooth transition to the bottom of the ottoman. I pushed down all the sides and then I went back and added glue to the corners and then pushed the corners down. Now we're ready to mark where our legs are going. I'm using a pencil and punching into the foam board so I can mark where my legs are going. And then I'm using an X-Acto knife and then scissors to make the hole bigger and bigger. Finally, I'm going to use the dowel rod to make the hole big enough for the legs, which are made out of the dowel rod. I need to do this for all four places there's going to be a leg. Now I'm going to take a piece of fabric that's just slightly smaller than the bottom of my ottoman. I'm gonna put glue all the way around, especially on the existing fabric, but I wanna make sure I don't get too much in the holes where the legs are going. And then I'm going to gently press my fabric down. It's going to have unfinished edges, but as long as you have enough glue, they won't come unraveled. While that dries, I'm going to take my dowel rod. This is a 3 16 inch diameter, and I'm going to mark it off in 3 quarter inch sections. Then I'm gonna take my snipper and cut them into pieces. I will need four of these. Then I will use my X-Acto knife to taper down one end. Be very careful when doing this. Next, I'm gonna make sure that I stain it using the same stain I used on my original chair. This is an alcohol marker, um, but you can use any kind of staining marker or actual stain that comes in a can. Now I'm going to open up the holes that we previously created underneath the fabric, and I'm going to punch in the tapered end and then turn it around and put in the larger end of the dowel rod and make sure I like how it looks and like how I like the length. Then I can fill the holes with tacky glue and put in the legs. I like doing this with tacky glue as opposed to hot glue because you can fiddle around with them, make sure you like the way they're pointing, make sure um, you put it down, see if it wobbles, and if it does, you can either push in or pull out the legs until it sits how you like. And that's it. That's my tutorial for this little ottoman. It's a pretty simple piece, but um, if you're looking to make a set, you now have something that can match your chair. If you like this video, please leave me a like. If you have any ideas for future tutorials I can do, leave me a comment. And as always, you can share your creations with me on Instagram. I always love seeing what you guys create. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.